Right then, so let's go for a first start. Hmm. Let's get cracking. Uh, no, we don't. Do you see anything wrong here? No. <laughs> you what? We got no way to do it. Do it no. Hmm. Rewind a bit. The head had to come off after doing the timing belt. Why? It's because I saw something in the cylinder that didn't look good. Hmm. Turned out it was just a bit of burnt carbon. But just as well I did though, we got something going on here and everything looked fine at first glance. Just a bit grubby. We can sort that though, no? Before I do, I want to see that these valves hold a nice seal. No point in cleaning it all up just to find out it doesn't hold any sort of compression. All right, so let's have it. Top end of the engine, in the head, we got the camshafts. The lobes on these make contact with a follower, which in turn moves the valves down and back up with the help of a spring. These allow air and fuel to enter the cylinder via the intake side, get ignited and then let out via the exhaust side. Bottom end, the pistons turn the up and down linear motion from the combustion into a usable rotating motion. Today, we're concentrating on that top end, refurb tick. Now at least our valves ain't bent like those ones or broken and dislodged like this. In a state of that. Don't want it to look. My goodness. Wow. So with all the valves closed on this cylinder, I'm going to use some fuel that I had to do a little test. Fill up the void and see if any escapes. To the naked eye, you can't see it, but a five minute time lapse shows we're losing some. That ultimately means losing compression and therefore power. Now I know this head's going to need some work, but I wanted to delve deeper, so I lightly removed the baked on carbon with a soft wire brush. There was also one of the coolant channels completely blocked. Crusty. That won't help with heat management around the head. No, sir. And this sealant. I can't stand it. It weren't there from factory, and I want to see it. Now, with that crust removed, you can see that the surface is pitted. That's a weak spot, meaning coolant can potentially make its way into the combustion chamber, and that could be catastrophic. An even closer look you can see minute cracks between spark plugs and valves, and even between the cylinders. More potential for failure. Now I wonder what caused this? Excess heat? Previous repairs? Who knows? It's all speculation at this point. All I know is it looks good from afar, but far from good. So this needs quite a few repairs. Corrosion, cracks, valve seats, maybe even a skim too. Not something I can DIY at home. Big thumbs down. However, I know who can. If you know, you know. These lot are big in the game. And you must already know the name by now. It's SBD Motorsport. They took this clapped out head, highlighted all the problem areas. They then ground them back and then machined out all the cracks. These were then laser welded in the areas needed. Machine the face flat and then cut in new valve seats with pure precision. I can't thank them enough. So I got a lot back. In two boxes though. Hmm. Let's have a butch, eh? So the smaller box has the valves, valve springs, cams, basically every moving part in the head. Now I was expecting it to be all reassembled. Silly, but I ain't even mad. In fact, the opposite. I get to delve deeper into building it back up. Ooh, looking good. Closer up, you can see how fresh this is. Looks brand new, man. Anyway, enough gazing. So here's the head. Shout out to SBD Motorsport on this one because they have done a top job. Everything looks crisp. No more cracks between, between the valves. 
That little corrosion's been sorted as well, all laser welded, and it looks spot on. So now you've got this, a valve. These need to go back into here, but the surface needs to be ground to create a perfect seal. And that's what we call valve lapping. Let's get onto that. Hold on, wait up. The state of these valves. I can't put these back in this sooted up state. So I soaked them in fuel and gave them a quick polish up. Result. So we've got the exhaust valves here, they're clean. And the inlet valves at the back, all cleaned up, ready to be fitted. New tools for the job. This is what we're gonna to use to lap in the valve with. We've got some uh, coarse grade cut in paste and some fine grade to finish off with. Uh, yeah, see how I get down. Get the valve. Think of this as a shrunk down toilet plunger. Suction, helping us hold the valve. Like that. That holds that nicely. I've got some fresh engine oil here. We wanna keep this looped up as it's gonna be twisting. Now without the engine oil, you're leaving yourself open to wear the guides. I don't need that stress, so I'll take my time here. Using one of my missus makeup brushes, I applied the coarse paste to the edge of the valve. Send it in. Here we go. Twist in motion whilst lifting in and out to ensure an even grind the whole way around the valve and the valve seat. Then we can come back in again with a fine paste. It's easy. Clean away the grit and you're left with this. You can see the dull area cut into these two and the uncut area on these. Sorted. Just the rest to do now. This was repeated until everyone looked the same. But I'll spare you watching that. It's long. Here's what the valve looked like. And here's the new cut finish. Yeah, looks pretty decent to me. What do you reckon? They are new valve stem seals. These will sit around each of the valve stems and prevent oil getting into the combustion chamber, which would cause smoke. And we don't want no smoke, all right? That is the stem. It's got a little spring around the top, so that's to keep the plastic tight around the stem. Obviously, this will need to be lubricated so it doesn't bind up against that stem. I'll oil one up just to show you. It'll be just like that inside the engine. So that will be facing towards the combustion side. This will be top side where the cams are. And obviously it will be able to move up and down. And that little spring on the side keeps the plastic or whatever material it is tight against the stem. Next. So I'm gonna give this just a little wipe down and then I'm gonna number each one of these so they stay within their respective ports. Trust me, it pays to be thorough cleaning as the grit can undo all that hard work. The valves have been matched to their respective seats and I want them to go back in the correct places when the time comes. The same tool I used to lap the valves in is used to pull them back out. And then we're gonna clean out all inside here as well because we had that grinding paste. And you best believe I did this a few times just to make sure. to make sure I've got this little bit of uh, tissue which I'm going to soak and then force it all the way through so it pulls out any grit through to the other side. Now we've got the head spun over back onto the other side. This is where the top of the valve stem comes through. There'll be a spring that's sat on there and then a collet which holds the valve in place stopping it falling into the engine. 
we need these to be put in place first because the valve spring can't just sit on the head itself otherwise it will wear that away and that would not be good so we need to get these fitted then the stem seal and we can push the valve through put the spring on the top hat and then the collet to lock it all in place it'll all make sense i'll just show you i hope you're still with me a telescopic magnet helped me drop these little spaces in Next thing, we need to get our stem seal, and that's what this little tool is for. A little bit of oil on there just to lube it up so we don't ruin the seal. Now there's a recess in the tool, so the seal sits in it flush. I just pushed them in as far as they can go, and then finished up with a few gentle taps to ensure that they're fully in. Now you can see, Stem seal fitted. That's one down. It's another 15 to go. Now you can see each and every one. There's a fresh valve stem oil seal. Looking sweet. Beautiful. Get out the way. Who got a watch? Who got the time? I'm Let's get it on the side. Feelings grind don't stop. Got big dreams. Oil them valves up again. Send them in and through our freshly installed stem seals. Next goes in the springs. They help close the valves from their open position. And then these top hats go on top of those springs. Just like that. This is going to hopefully compress the valve. A bit awkward this tool as I'm used to the spring loaded handle version. But it got the job done. The idea is to compress the spring down enough to get the two retaining collets on the end of the valve. It's a case of winding it down, exposing the grooves. Then two of these cone shaped collets can slot right in. Little bit of grease inside of the collet. Work our way in. As you can imagine, it's very tight. Can't get fingers in there, so with some grease and a cocktail stick, I can carefully guide them in and on. Fiddly or what? Then I unwind the tool. The cone shape of the collet stops the top hat coming off the end. Clever, eh? Switching positions Now you under my submission Like woo, My rules Progress Big moves Y'all heavy on the tweeting I'll disappear a whole season Like woo, Who said they looking for me I'ma make you wait for it One step closer Racks on a shopping spree Yeah I'ma make you pay for it Next I'm gonna chuck a spark plug in Just to seal up the chamber And then we're gonna check to see If anything leaks past the valves we just put in I love it when everything's clean, eh? Let's go. I'm filling up the chambers with methylated spirits this time. The reason I use this and fuel over water is it has a lower surface tension. Water likes to sort of stick to itself more. So it'd be harder to tell if there was a leak. I also don't want any risk of corrosion. I'm gonna leave it way longer and then come back. Nearly 20 minutes later and it hasn't budged. The valves are doing their job Nicely lapped in. Sweet. What are you saying? That purple looks kind of cool on that polished surface, huh? Not entirely accurate as it's not perfectly level, but I think we can agree. Nothing's moved, so our compression should be good. And we shouldn't have any leak past these valves. On to the cams. Well, first I've got to get rid of that spirit. Now, we get the camshafts back in. I'm going to replace the seals on the end, but not in this video, because when I ordered a pair, the uh, supplier thought they send one. What use is one? So for now, we'll use the old seals, just to show you how it goes back together, and then I can chuck these in another time. So I can take these bearing caps off. You can't really mess them up, because they're all numbered. So you've got number one, and then you've got number one on the casting. Two, two, so on, all the way along. So if you mess it up, you're basically an idiot, right? 
off with the bearing caps and make sure they stay in order. Otherwise, I risk wear to the cams and they've essentially been ground together with minute differences. Trust me, it pays to be thorough. I ain't done yet. Before the camshafts can go in, we need to put these in. They are hydraulic tappets and they go in there. They sit on top of the valves and they kind of go between the valves and the cam lobes themselves. They're oil filled, but obviously they've been out the engine for a little while. So I'm gonna put them in some Tupperware, submerge them in oil, should save us any tapping noises on first start. Well, it should reduce them anyway. Let's go. Tupperware, oil and time is all I need. Let them soak for like an hour. Then they can go in their respective holes. Made sure nothing was binding. We kept it gliding. I ain't playing. Before the cams go in and make sure these bearing surfaces are lubricated. More oil again. So these are the camshafts, they sit on top. We're gonna get those in. And yep, more oil. These cams will sit slightly proud as the valves are all currently shut. Once tightened down, some of the valves will be partially open due to the position of the cam lobes. To make things easy, I'm gonna put the cam seals on before putting the caps on so we don't have to drive them in. We can just clamp them down. Well, I'll put one new one on and uh, an old one's gonna to have to go on for now and we'll change that when we get the replacement. Yeah, I'm not happy about receiving one of the pair, but what can you do? These bearing caps can go on. Obviously, we'll loop them up as well. Easy as that, on beat and in order. The bolts are nipped up and now need to be torqued to a specific tightness. In this case, 20 Newton meters. I work my way from outwards to the inner to spread the load evenly. Then I get to repeat that all again for the intake cam. It was quicker this time round. The cam sprockets can go back in place, but I'll torque these down once the head is bolted down to the block. Makes it a bit easier. And we're done here. Q montage. completed, we can think about getting this back on the block. The Calibra is one step closer to being back on the road. I'm Wayne, this is Tings on Wheels, bless up.